guys what is going on i hope you guys are well so guys i wanted to make a video because i've been having a lot back and forth with a couple of people on my instagram on youtube um eddie ends come out and made a few comments about kel brook we obviously know kel brook's gonna fight terence crawford wish him all the best for that you know he's not long away now not this week but the week after Ter uh, kel brook will be fighting terence crawford um but eddie ends made some comments where he said where he felt a bit upset that Kel Brook questioned his loyalty um and basically he said uh Eddie Eddie and said you know what like I've I spent I've been through the mill with Kel Brook you know I went I went down to you know Sheffield when you know he was not living the life and I helped him spent a lot of time in his house with his dad trying to get Kel Brook together um and you know i i feel like i've been very loyal to kel brook uh he basically said that he feels that kel brook when he's asked all the other broadcasters his own um sky uh he's asked uh, bt itv channel 5 nobody wants to take the fight and then he's come to me uh looking for a looking for some money um he's come back to me wanting to put the fight on sky um and obviously i have a budget uh and i don't have i didn't really have and I, I think he, they put an offer to top rank but top rank rejected it because they didn't feel the money was sufficient um so kel brook i don't even think kel brook was buying i think top rank must have told kel brook to contact eddie because their relationship his relationship must be closer the top rank might have told kel to listen give eddie a ring see if you can work out a deal and obviously because maybe the deal between Top Rank and Sky was going nowhere. So they probably tried to get Kel Brook involved. And Kel Brook probably rang Eddie Hearn to say, come on, let's make the fight. We've been with you. I don't think it was Kel Brook directly. I think it might have been his dad, Kel Brook's dad. But things just didn't work out. And Eddie Hearn didn't want to know because he didn't think the fight was that lucrative. And it just didn't make sense for them. It didn't make sense for them financially i don't think just because of the fact that i think four in the morning is it going to do pay-per-view like i would buy the fight yes me but i'm a hardcore boxing fan that buys every single fight right i'm i'm i buy every fight so really you can't really judge it on me you've got to look at will the casuals buy it will it do big numbers it wouldn't brook crawford or crawford brook doesn't do big numbers 4 a.m in the morning you know why Usyk Chisora does bigger numbers. Dillian White Povetkin does bigger numbers, which has now been uh, postponed because of Povetkin testing positive for coronavirus. Uh, and Joshua Pulev obviously does way bigger numbers. That's the issue. So it's not a case where it's a business thing from Hearn, you know, and it just didn't make sense. But at the end of the day, I can see why Kel Brook's frustrated. Kel Brook probably thought Eddie Hearn's my friend. Uh, he'll back me, but. Just because somebody's your, they're doing business with you, that doesn't mean that you're your, they're your friend. And the thing is, Kel Brook kind of cut Eddie Hearn out of the deal. So there was nothing really in it for Eddie Hearn, really. There was nothing in it because Kel Brook basically went over to America, got paid $2 million to fight, he's getting paid $2 million to fight Terence Grove, according to Eddie Hearn. Now he would have to pay Hearn out of his purse now i understand now two million dollars isn't a lot of money for a fight like that if you're having to pay her in a split right out of that what are you going to be left with at the end you're going to be left with pit and so i understand it especially the fact that this may be kel brook's last payday you know i can see why i can see why he's done it why he's said you know what i need to just do this i need to do this deal myself but i can also see why eddie earns peed off at the same time because he feels that he's been let down and he feels he's been betrayed. However, you've got to look at it from this point. You've got to look at it from Kel Brook's situation. That is at the end of his career. He wants to make a few quid. He's cut Eddie Earn out. Eddie Earn's not put him on Sky because he doesn't think financially it makes sense. Simple as that. I think it comes down. If, it, if the fight had made sense financially, because a lot of people are saying, well, you know, Eddie Earn, right? He's taking it out on Brook. You know, he's let Brook down. It's not. It's business. If the fight had made sense financially for Sky, do you honestly think they wouldn't take in the fight? Do you honestly think Eddie Earn would just, would be like, oh, you know what? Kel Brook's betrayed me, so I'm not going to, 
I'm I'm not going to uh, take this fight because even though it makes a lot of money for me. No, because he knows it's not going to make a lot of money. He knows by him taking the fight, he'd just be doing Brooke a massive favor. He won't be getting anything out of it. And if you guys think that Eddie Earn will just be putting a fight on for the sake of it when he's getting nothing out of it, then come on. You know, especially a guy that's looking to make a last, probably a last career payday, according to Eddie Hearn, or the way Eddie Hearn sees it. Eddie Hearn's thinking, what's, it in, what's in there for me? Because Eddie Hearn doesn't think Kell Brook's going to win the fight, so he doesn't think that there's anything in the future to make from with Kell Brook. And Eddie Hearn thinks that he's actually left me. So Eddie Hearn's probably a little upset. Um, but listen, at the, at, the, at the end of the day, at the end, at the end of the day, I, listen. I think Kell Brook. I wish him all the best. I hope he makes a few. I hope he makes a few quid. I hope he gives a good account of himself against Crawford. Um, but I just, I just think that you can't blame either party. You can see it from. You, you, you can look at things from. Uh, you can look at um, things from both angles, and you can understand why uh, both parties are not happy. Because Kell Brook probably saw Eddie as a friend. Eddie probably thought that Kell Brook didn't go with me. Like we've done all the fights together, and this fight he's gone without me. Um, but then Akel's at the end of the road. He wants to make as much money as he can. Brooke wants to make as much money as he can. He doesn't want to be paying Eddie Hearn a big slice out of a small cake, really, for a fight of that magnitude and a fight that risky. So I can see. I can understand both parties. However, Eddie Hearn said something else. Eddie Hearn said that Kel Brook did not waste his career chasing Amir Khan. He wasted his career... Not being in the gym, not not dedicating himself to his craft. Did Kell Brook waste his time chasing Amir Khan? Absolutely, in my opinion. I don't agree with Eddie on that at all. Did he waste his time chasing Amir Khan? He spent so much energy just looking to chase that fight. He forgot that there's other top fighters out there where he could have made a name for himself. Kell Brook in his whole career only fought three guys, really. And he's going to fight the fourth guy in Crawford. Three top guys. Porter... Golovkin and Spence. Those are the names that Kell Brook has fought in his whole career. In a career that goes over a decade, like maybe over a decade. Three fighters. How many former world champions has he faced? Four or five in his whole career? Shocking. You know, you'd expect him to have faced a lot of, you know, a lot of top fighters. He's hardly faced any. You know, hardly faced any. And um, I think he spent way too long chasing Amir Khan. And I think a lot of it was down to the fact that, you know, it depends on who's who you support and whose fan you are. But I think a lot of it was down to the fact that I think he was envious of Khan, in, in, at the, especially... Envious, and what I mean by envious is the fact that Khan always, Amir Khan was a bigger name, a bigger star. He he had he had a huge following. He he made a shed load of money. Uh, he was very famous internationally, really. Um, and Kell Brook wasn't. And Kell Brook felt I'm better than this guy. I want the name. I want the fame. I want the money. I want the big fights. I want my name up in lights like this guy. But it kind of never really worked out for him, you know. And he felt by beating Khan, it's like Amir Khan had all the superpowers. By me beating this guy, I would get all the superpowers of this guy. Because I, I, I saw a lot of interviews with Kell Brook and Kell Brook hinted it many times. He indirectly hinted it. He goes, look at this guy. He's got so many followers on social media. He's got, you know, he's got su such a big following, this, that. So he hinted it. At, uh, uh, in many interviews, Kell Brook hinted it. Now, a lot of his fans say, well, oh, it's because Khan always said he, d he smashed him up in sparring. And, you know, he's talking rubbish about Kell Brook. But guys, think about it. Just with a realistic, think about it, right? Amir Khan won a silver medal for Great Britain. Both of these guys were in around the same time. Kell Brook didn't go to the Olympic Games. So when Amir Khan says that he did a job on Kell Brook in sparring, right? Why wouldn't you believe that? One guy won a silver medal. One guy did nothing as an amateur compared to Khan. You know, what did Kell Brook... Like, Kell Brook's highest achievement as an amateur doesn't compare to Amir Khan's highest achievement as an amateur. So... 
The fact that Amir Khan made that statement is probably true. Now, a lot of a lot of people will say, well, Amir Khan ducked Kell Brook. Yes. He did. He didn't he didn't fight Kell Brook in 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 his prime. Yes. They should have he should have fought him because Amir Khan was the guy that could have made that fight happen. For sure. One million percent. But Amir Khan didn't see Kell Brook as a big fish. The whole British public did. He didn't. Because he he always felt that Khan, uh, that uh, that Brook was below him, and Brook always felt this guy's above me. I need to get to this. I need to beat this guy, and take all of his superpowers. I need to. I need to get his name. I need to get because at the end of the day, he felt like I said that that's where the envy came from. The fact that Khan was making more money, he had a bigger name, right? He had a he's, he had a better career, and that's where the envy is, is come from. So don't think that Brook. Brooke had a lot to gain by fighting Khan. Khan had a lot to lose. And the fight was, the fight in their primes was a brilliant fight as well. It was a brilliant fight. Here's the problem I have. A lot of the Khan fans, me, I'm one of them. Khan, I openly say to you guys, I accept the fact that Khan was, uh, Brooke was a tough fight for Khan. It wasn't an easy fight. The fact that Brooke was bigger than Khan, because I mean, Khan started his career at 135. Brooke started his career, he was a natural 147 pounder. Brooke was a tough fight. Brooke was a good fighter, razor sharp, and st I could see stylistically he would have given Khan a lot of trouble. Here's the problem: a lot of the Brooke fans don't accept the fact that Khan in his prime was a problem for Kell Brook, and I don't know how you can come fathom that. Canelo was levels above Kell Brook. Le he's levels above, pound for pound, in my opinion, the best fighter in the world today. Amir Khan for me was outboxing Canelo. Right? Forget the scorecards because you're never gonna you're never gonna be up on the scorecards against Canelo. Right? I know a lot of people are going to point out, well, he was losing on the... No, no, no. You're never going to be. Paulie Malinagi, Freddie Roach, all of these guys had Khan winning every round. Most of these guys had, you know, Teddy Atlas, who doesn't even like Amir Khan, had Khan winning every round in that fight. And even if you didn't have him winning every round, 4-2, 5-1, whatever, but he was up. Right? He was boxing against Canelo beautifully. Right? What makes you think that Kel Brook, Amir Khan couldn't have done that against Kel Brook? If you think that Kell Brook would have hit Khan on the chin and that would have been the fight done, then you're the most delusional character and the most idiotic person because the, believe you me, the fight wouldn't have played like that. Could Kell, could Kell Brook have broken Khan down and maybe stopped him late? For sure. But Kell Brook didn't have one punch knockout power like that. I've seen Kell Brook throughout his whole career. Even Jojo Dan and Frankie Gavin, guys of that level. I'm talking guys way below Khan. Way below Khan. Way below Khan. Carson Jones, who was a, what was he, a gatekeeper, journeyman, whatever you want to call him, went 12 rounds with Kell Brook. So to assume that guys like Frankie Gavin that can go six rounds with Kell Brook, right, taking punishment from Kell Brook, and you think Amir Khan's just going to get hit with one punch and get wiped out? Like, this is what I'm saying. I'm realistic, but that thought is delusional because I've seen Kell Brook's career, his whole career, his whole career. So when people just think that he's going to hit just the same way they say that Sean Porter would knock Khan out. I've debunked that claim many times. That who did Sean Porter ever knock out? Who did Sean Porter ever knock out? He, ne he never he didn't knock out Julio Diaz. He didn't knock out Phil LaGreco. Ame Khan wiped Phil LaGreco out in 50 seconds. You know, this is what I try to say to people. Look at the facts. Look at the stats. Right? Styles make fights. And Kell Brook stylist, you know what made Kell Khan Brook a very good fight? Yeah, and why I'm upset that Amir Khan should have, in my opinion, had that fight. Because he could have won that fight. Kell Brook could have won that fight. And stylistically, both of them did things that were problem to each other. Kell Brook was naturally the bigger man and he had good pop in that right hand. Right? He had good timing as all of you guys like to point out. But Amir Khan also had attributes... Which, not just a problem to Kell Brook, but a problem to anybody he faced. In his hand speed, you know, the fastest hands I've ever seen. You know? His movement would have been a problem for Kell Brook. He was faster than Kell Brook. His movement was faster than Kell Brook. His feet movement were faster than Kell Brook. He was so fast in his prime. Just everything about him was fast. Sometimes his own, his own strength used to get him in trouble. But this is what I'm trying to point out to people. That Kell Brook, right, chased Amir Khan too much. 
He, he shouldn't have... I understand why he wanted the fight. And yes, people that say that Khan docked the fight, yes. You can, you, you can definitely... Because Khan... Here's the thing, Khan was the A-side. So if he wanted the fight to happen, it would have happened. Right? So... But then I also know stories where there were significant offers to Kelbrook, which they didn't feel were reasonable. And I heard these on, a, on, a, on another channel... Right, and I don't know because I don't know. I don't have proof that there were offers made to Kelbrook which he didn't think were acceptable. Right, but the fact, matter of fact, is irrelevant whether ducking or not. That Kelbrook, for me personally, I believe he wasted too much time and he invested too much time in that fight. He should have gone to America. Should have joined Al Heyman. Should have fought Danny Garcia. And you know what? Kelbrook had a, had a, Kelbrook stylistically had a better chance of beating Danny Garcia, and Danny Garcia was more dangerous to Amir Khan than he was to Kelbrook. Stylistically, and there's probably certain styles that Amir Khan could beat easily that maybe Kelbrook would may have struggled with. The, this styles make fights in boxing, but the reason why Kel, Khan and Brook was a very good fight because I feel like both their styles were a problem to each other. Because of the things that I've just mentioned. Now, Brook fans and, and other fans are going to have their opinion. Oh, Brook would have knocked Khan out. Brook would have knocked Khan out in his prime. That's an opinion. You're entitled to it. If you think that, yes, you can think that. But uh, don't just make it out like no other option could happen. There's, believe me, Khan was a world-class fighter. He wasn't a crap fighter that was just going to get hit by a two-piece and he was going to fall over, especially in his prime. You know, let's not forget when he got hit by Danny Garcia, he got back up from that. That was a massive left hook that, that I don't even know how he got back up from. He, in his young days, he had a lot of heart. He had a lot of, he had a lot of grit. And that's why he got through a lot of fights. The Lamont Peterson fight, the Madonna fight, these were, these were terrible. These were horrible fights. Horrible fights to, if you're a Khan fan. They were torturous fights to be involved in. You can't be telling me that after watching fights like that, you think that he's not tough or he wouldn't have... Believe me. They would have been very. They would have been tough fights for Kell Brook as well, um, and I'm sad really because I think it would have been a great fight, and and it would have been an an interesting. It would have been a brilliant fight to watch. Stylistically, would have been a, a great fight, great matchup. But unfortunately, we just didn't get. We didn't get to see it. We didn't get to see it. Which it, which I I don't. I, to be honest, it doesn't sit well with me because I think it was a fight that both guys could have really won. It was a very close fight. Um, and I think Kel Brook could have made himself a mega massive star over in the US if he had gone over there. And then I think he, he could have put himself in a position where Amir Khan had to fight him. Where Kel Brook becomes such a big star. But Kel Brook wanted the shortcut. He just wanted to fight Amir Khan, beat him, try to beat him and... And then go on. But that's a short... Like, you could have fought... You could have fought Danny Garcia. You could have fought Lamont Peterson. You could have fought... You could have fought Danny Garcia. Just imagine. Kelbrook could have fought Danny Garcia. If he beat Danny Garcia, which was no easy fight, by the way, he would have beaten a guy that Amir Khan got beat by. You know? That in itself would have been a... A reason for Amir Khan to get in the ring with Kelbrook, but I just feel like Kelbrook's career, the fights just didn't work out. Forget the Khan fight; the other fights didn't work out. The other big fights he didn't get. All even the Spence fight was kind of forced on him, really mandatory. You know, after the Golovkin fight, he took the Golovkin fight was the only one, the only one, the only big fights that Kelbrook's been able to make. That Sean Porter, he had to put himself in a mandatory position. Errol Spence was a mandatory. Golovkin and Terence Crawford; these are the only two big fights in his career that they've made without them being mandatories or you know him being a mandatory or someone else being a man like these are the only two big fights that they've been able to make as his um, as him as a voluntary defense or or him fighting another as a champion fighting another top guy which is for a guy like Kel Brook that's you know good good fighter you know great fighter really he was a very good fighter just we just didn't get to see it we didn't get to see it and it's really frustrating that now he's going to fight Terence Crawford. If he, if he loses, it's maybe finished. You know, and this is what people don't understand. I've been banging on for years that, listen, Kel Brook, he needed to join Al Heyman. That was, that was his biggest mistake when he won the world title. But he stayed with Eddie Hearn. And unfortunately, Eddie Hearn thinks it's his fault. Eddie Hearn's saying it's his fault. The fact that he couldn't, he wasn't disciplined 
you know, he doesn't discipline. And he, he didn't waste his career by chasing Amir Khan. He wasted his career by not being in the gym. Yes, listen, I've heard rumors. Yeah, we don't know. We don't know. But for me, too much time was spent chasing Amir Khan. Too much time was spent chasing Amir Khan when that time should have been invested in fighting other top level men. That's my opinion. Um, and, he, and he would have put himself in a position where that Khan fight would have happened naturally. And where Amir Khan might have had to chase Kell Brook then because Kell Brook became such a big name. But Kell Brook just wanted the Khan fight for some reason. I don't know why. You know, the big fights just couldn't be made. It was, I don't know, man. I don't know. It's frustrating with Kell Brook. It's frustrating. Yeah, it's a frustrating career. And, and with a lot of Kell Brook fans, it's always what it could have been. You know, it's not what it is, it's what it could have been, you know, and that's one, that's one career. Now, let's see what he does with Crawford, because here's the thing, he could take himself to another level by beating Terence Crawford. So he's got another opportunity, maybe his last opportunity. But, you know, let's see what happens, man. Let's see what happens, you know. I wish him all the best against Terence Crawford. Let, let's see if he gets the job done. Let's see if he can land some of his chocolate brownies and wipe out Terence Crawford. But... Time will tell. Leave your thoughts, guys. Let me know what you think. Uh, and guys, remember to please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.